present For the Record with Neil Heinen. A conversation with Governor Tony Evers is next on For the Record. Thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Heinen. After an eight-year absence, the governor of Wisconsin is once again a guest on For the Record. And there's a lot to talk about as I welcome Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers. Governor, nice to see you. What a breakthrough. <laughs> Eight years. Finally, the governor is back is back on the show. It's good to be yeah, here. Yeah, it's, it's been a strange time. Um, just take a minute, though, Governor, sure. and talk about um, how's it going? I mean, you, <laughs> you had to hit the ground running. Yes. But give us your assessment of the first four months. You know, I, people ask about that, and uh, uh, actually some of the more complex things are the things on a personal level. Like sure. Like, how do you... How do you get rid of a bunch of stuff you collected over the years while you make this move? All that kind of personal stuff. But yeah. uh, as, as the job goes, it's going well. I, I never let the, uh, the political hubbub uh, get me wrapped into a pretzel. I yeah. mean, you have to, I think you have to stay steady, steady and make sure that people understand where you stand and, and reach out. And that's what we're going to continue doing going forward. you got a good team around you. You're yes. happy with the, with the people Absolutely. that you've attracted both, into yeah, the administration. Both, both both in the governor's office and also the uh, our members of our cabinet yeah. I'd like to get them approved relatively soon they're nice. doing a great job and uh, I assume it will happen but for some reason we're a little slow on the trigger there so in the last week uh, Republicans um, laid out what they intend to, to pull out of your budget right so what's your strategy moving forward Governor? well uh, I'll use Medicaid as an example yep. uh, that that was uh, not an unexpected a, pl a place on their part uh, uh, that they would they would take the expansion off the table but the fact of the matter is we're getting good support across the state and actually there are some Republicans that have talked publicly in favor of this and and the reason we're we're fighting for this uh, th this is a top priority for us we're not we're not giving up and we continue to go across the state talking about it it's a it's a it's a it's a step that we can do to make sure that 82,000 more people get uh, adequate and as accessible health health care and also by doing that we'll be drawing down federal funds to, to, to work on issues such as well baby and well mom mom uh, uh, programs and that's that's a huge issue in our state the health outcomes of moms and babies of women and, and kids little babies of color is nowhere near where it should be and we need some help around that issue mental health issues opioid addiction making sure that our water is safe all those things are connected to federal programs that we or federal money that we can we can do things with 300 we're going to be able to put 1.6 billion dollars into the uh, health care of our our state including increasing rates of reimbursement for hospitals and doctors and therapists and so dentists huge issue okay. and so to us, to us, it's a it's a no-brainer, and 70% of the people agree with us in the Marquette poll. So having the Republican leaders just say, "No, we're not going to do it," I don't believe I can let those that 70% of the people down. So we are taking this all across the state. If people can go online and take a look and see exactly how much money their counties are doing or would be getting out of this as, as, a, as an opportunity to be a healthier Wisconsin, it's a, to me, we're going to continue fighting for it. Governor, you, I mean, you clearly um, decided to put items into your budget that you knew were non-starters with the Republican mm -hmm. Party. What went into your thinking on that? And even, even insofar as talking to some Republicans in advance of the budget to work through some of these things, could you have done this in a way that didn't create quite so much tension coming out of it I don't think so okay uh, we we what we decided to do uh, both lieutenant governor Barnes and myself pre inauguration we went all across the state holding listening sessions where anybody could come they weren't pre-selected people they could be Republicans Democrats any place in between we put them in small groups talked about what issues are important to them took that input and that's what created our budget issues around transportation as issues about med medical um, uh, health care making sure that our schools are strong our University of Wisconsin system are strong uh, criminal justice reform all those things were like top priorities we created a budget from that we call it the people's budget I know that frustrates some Republicans when we say that but the, the fact of the matter is it was and the the polling shows it as an important issue so just just because we we decided to take the people's word and and talk and and take that to the legislature in the you know the bubble that we call the capital 
uh, I wouldn't have done it any different way. You know, there, there's always uh, talk about fiscal versus non-fiscal issues right. in the budget. Looking ahead, does that influence your thinking at all? No, I, you know, there, there will be non-fiscal items that I think actually we can get uh, approved outside of the budget. I think in the past those same quote-unquote non-fiscal items were left left in the budget. So it's it's all in the eye of the beholder, frankly. And and so we, I wasn't surprised about any of the things that the Republicans have said no about. We, you know, I meet with the leadership, uh, you know, every other week or so, and uh, I think that's an adequate uh, amount, you know, for for us to communicate and continue to communicate. But I also feel an obligation to the people of the state. Uh, not not everything happens in the closed doors of uh, of the Capitol. I, I love to get out of the bubble and actually hear what people think, and they're, they're telling me don't give up, and right. I'm not going to give up. Well, you said you're going to fight like hell. Yeah, I'm going to fight like hell. And and you also, uh, you know, you reference Medicaid in particular, where right. public sentiment is yeah. uh, on your side. Now, how do you marshal that public sentiment? What do you ask citizens to do that could actually make a difference? Well, they, I, we're, we're going across the state talking to editorial boards. Like, yes, we were in Racine, Kenosha, and also Eau Claire, and we'll be continuing to do that across the state. And, and the good thing before, before when we talked about Medicaid expansion uh, on, in the Walker years, it was all conceptual. You know, it's like federal government bad, state government's good. Now we have data. We have data to show exactly how much money each county is losing by not doing this. And people get that. They see, they see numbers and they say, what are we talking about? Why, why, is, this a, why is this an issue? So we will, continue to talk, we will continue to take this on. This is a long way from being soup yet. How much of a distraction are, are the court challenges that just keep hanging over this government? Yeah, certainly there, there were challenges right from the get-go. I think uh, the lame duck session was uh, uh, a bad step, and now it's being litigated, and it's going to take time and all that. Uh, it, it was, I think, a, a wrong, wrong-headed thing to do, but it is what it was. And uh, so I'm, I'm moving past it, letting the courts sort it through. But uh, at the end of the day, it, it didn't get us off to a good start. And uh, I, I, I think we could have avoided that. You know, people with the state felt that they were, the Republicans were invalidating the November election. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm not, I'm not a, a, uh, ashamed of the fact that we took it on uh, uh, in a, in helped other gr working with other groups to take it to court. I think it has to be resolved uh, in that arena, and so let it happen, and we'll, we just continue on. This past week, you met with uh, Foxconn CEO Terry Go. When mm -hmm. we come back, I'm going to ask you about that meeting with okay. Governor Tony Evers right after this. For the record, sponsored by MG&E, your community energy company. No one sells more. Wild Automotive sells more SUVs and all-wheel drives combined than any other dealer. Wild is the number one volume SUV and all-wheel drive retailer in southeast Wisconsin. The more we sell, the more you save. WildAuto.com. Introducing Unlimited with Payback, only from U.S. Cellular. The only unlimited plan that pays you back for data you don't use. So, quit flushing money down the toilet with Verizon. Bye-bye. It's payback time. Get unlimited with payback and get paid back for data you don't use. You can save up to $240 per year on a single line versus Verizon. Five thousand years of Chinese music and dance in one night. Beautiful, a nimble Mastery. An explosion of color and sound. Experience Shen Yun. Coming to Overture Center for the Arts, May 7th and 8th. Tickets at shenyun.com slash Madison or call 800-800-4410. Replacing floors is a big job. Trust Empire today to get it done right. For almost 60 years, Empire has installed floors and homes just like yours. It's what we do every day. Your floors will be installed by experienced professionals. They specialize in custom work. Plus, we're not happy unless you are. And we've got more than 2 million satisfied customers to prove it. Professionally installed floors. That's Empire today. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. 
no one sells more. Wild Automotive sells more SUVs and all-wheel drives combined than any other dealer. Wild is the number one volume SUV and all-wheel drive retailer in Southeast Wisconsin. The more we sell, the more you save. WildAuto.com. I'm back with Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers. And Governor, this past week you met with uh, Foxconn CEO Terry Goh. Um, just fill us in from that meeting. What, sure. what, what do you know now about Foxconn's plans going forward? Well, it was, it was more of a meet and greet. I had, you know, I've worked with a lot of his lieutenants over time. Uh, actually, since we, even before we were inaugurated, we've been working with them and listening to them and trying to, you know, understand exactly what they want to do. With, uh, with Chairman Goh, my goal was to get to know him, and so there was a lot of relationship building, and frankly, I'd say most of the time was talking about um, the fact that he's moving out of day-to-day -day operations yeah. and, and looking to do other things like be president. And, and so he was just introducing me to the people that were going to be, be replacing him and assuring me that they're good people and they're, that we're going to have good working relationships. It was primarily about relationships building. So much of the, of the, of the story surrounding this whole thing, mm -hmm. Governor, have been about past performance by Foxconn. Mm -hmm. And it raises those trust issues. Do you sure. trust Foxconn? Do you trust what you know? Well, certainly the people I have dealt with, the answer is yes. Uh, my goal with dealing with Foxconn has always been around issues of accountability and transparency and I think we have helped shape that to some extent we we know now that uh, what what their present plans are at least for the immediate presence is to build a uh, it's about a hundred thousand square foot facility in Racine County and hire uh, 1,500 people to operate a couple lines and so we, we know at least in the short term where, where they're going and, and so we've brought clarity to that, but we will continue to monitor, making sure that their uh, environmental standards are really important to me personally, and uh, we have to make sure that they're the best corporate citizen in that world, but also to make sure that they're as transparent as possible. But it, the people I know that, um, that work in the uh, organization that have been interacting with us uh, seem to be very honorable people and have, have good intentions, it's our goal to make sure that we continue to be as transparent as possible. Now, for a variety of reasons, of course, Foxconn tends to dominate it the, sure the, does. The, the, you know, the economic discussion. Yeah. So how are you in your thinking, Governor, incorporating in those people who say that um, we're taking a risk here by not investing more in small business creation and startups and the stuff that may actually create more jobs and be more sustainable? Right, and that's, that's what our goal was uh, during campaign to bring that issue up and, and, and since then too. What we, we've been able to do is uh, appoint some WEDEC board members, or Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation board members, that are young entrepreneurs. And so we believe, I know that WEDEC has done work with entrepreneurship in the state of Wisconsin, but we're still way, way, way low on, on that uh, nationally. And that's where the majority of the jobs are going to be coming from. So we want to make sure that WEDEC is, is is up front and, and pushing that issue as hard as they can. That's why we appointed the board members that we did. Yeah. One last question, just this past week again, um, the 2020 presidential campaign is in, in full bore. Yeah, and clearly, Governor Wisconsin is already a, yeah. a, a, a targeted state, and I suspect it's inevitable that Right. There's going to be pressure on you to deliver Wisconsin for the Democrats. What's your assessment of things right well, now? Well, I think I know we can. And having the Democratic Convention in, in Wisconsin is really Great. important. Yep. And my goal, uh, I'm not endorsing anybody pre-primary, but uh, the, the bottom line is my goal is when they call me, I say, when you come to Wisconsin, you just can't come once. You, Wisconsin is going to be the, the key state in this next election. And if the Democrats want to win, all 20, now I think there's 21, the uh, senator from Colorado came in yesterday. And they're all good people. And I think uh, it's similar to my race. Uh, we had about 20 Democrats running for governor at one point in time. And it was difficult and complex, but it made me a better candidate and, and it energized the base. That can same happen at the national level. Yeah. Governor, it's nice to see you. Good Thanks for doing you again, this. Neil. Thank you. When we come back, political reporter Jessica Arp will join me on For the Record right after this. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. 
Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. Congratulations to Jess Goble, a top-notch kindergarten teacher at Monticello Public Schools. We can't just teach the academics in kindergarten. We have to teach them how to be people, too. And I think that that's what we really strive for in my room, is to build that community of people. If you know a teacher who deserves to be recognized as a top-notch teacher, send us a letter, an email, or nominate a teacher at channel3000.com. Sponsored by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. It's the Outback that's right for you. The 2019 Subaru Outback 2.5i Premium at Don Miller Subaru. Symmetrical all-wheel drive plus 32 MPG EPA Highway. 10-way power driver's seat standard. Lease the Subaru Outback 2.5i Premium from $269 a month plus tax, 36 months, 10,000 miles a year, no security deposit. 1969 due at signing. 0% financing available. Don Miller Subaru, West on Odana, or the East Side Store on High Crossing Boulevard, Madison. Don Miller. Whether your health goal is mobility, independence, or just peace of mind, the iCare Medicare plan can help you get there. If you're a Wisconsin resident on Medicare and Medicaid, call today to enroll in an iCare plan that's right for you. If you feel like you're sometimes too busy to get your kids a healthy meal, a UW study says you are not alone. And we talk with the Better Business Bureau about what you can do to help clean out any personal information on your computers. We'll see you Monday. Joined now by News 3 Now Assistant News Director and Senior senior Political Reporter Jessica Arp, who was listening in on the conversation. Um, in terms of the budget, first of all, um, Jessica, the, the idea that, I mean, it sounds like he did indeed think through what he was going to put in there that he knew were non-starters for the Republicans, and yet he put them in there anyway. Are you surprised at that? Uh, I don't think so, in part because the campaign was so focused on many of these things. Right. Um, I think, you know, from a strategic standpoint, it probably would have been uh, questioned a lot afterwards if some of those things wouldn't have been included, including the Medicaid expansion, even though that is such, and they've professedly said it has been such a non-starter in the budget. The question that I think we're going to have to look at going forward now is how many of these things were the hill to die on, mm -hmm. right? And um, the way the Medicaid expansion and the way this week has gone, it does. It really looks like that may very well be, be the, the hill. The, the hill that yeah. they decide to choose to say we may veto a budget that not that doesn't include that. I don't think we've heard him say that explicitly at this point. Right. But that would be the question: Would you veto a budget he that doesn't include it? He, he seems to have this message that he is sticking to, which is this is what he has heard from the citizens, and polling supports that, and that he's that's his message going forward: is this is nothing. This is not about politics. This is what the voters, the citizens of Wisconsin, want. Well, and what's really interesting is the sort of strategy that. Um, if you think through how they came to say we're going to remove all non-fiscal policy from the budget. So that's a lot of things, right? That's all the stuff about uh, marijuana, that's the Medicaid expansion, there's all kinds of policy in there. And there was some reporting this week that sounded like there were some Republicans, including some Republicans who were on the Joint Finance Committee who were potentially coming around to the idea of this Medicaid expansion concept. and. Really, the only way, if that's a thing that some people are starting to be interested in, the only way you pull that out of there is to say, we got to take it all out. Mm -hmm. Got to take it all out at one time. Because you're probably not going to have Republicans who say, no, I want to leave some of these other things in that I really disagree with. Yeah. I mean, minimum markup um, ro repeal is another big thing that there's going to be people on both sides who say, no, we don't want to do that. So saying to pull the Medicaid expansion out of the budget in a finance sense in a giant rollback of everything that's non-fiscal is really a way to sort of tie the hands of some of those moderate Republicans who might be saying, eh, maybe we should think about taking it now. Damn. Now they have to go in this direction. Do you think he'd veto the budget? I, I mean, it, I think the Medicaid expansion might be, it, it certainly was a key 
issue for him in the campaign, a key thing that he's run on, a key thing that Democrats across the state have made. Have, it's very, very important to them. And when you look at a lot of the medical organizations in the state, they've been lobbying for this same thing too. But I, I don't know, both sides are so very entrenched on this that a budget getting to his desk that included it, I just don't know if I can see it happening right. given the control in the legislature. So we may very well be sitting here in September, October <laughs> saying, well, we're still on a stalemate yeah. about Medicaid, and, you know, who knows exactly how long that could go on. Yeah. Jessica, has he been inconsistent uh, in his statements about Foxconn, or has that been, uh, I mean, does that is that accurate? Well, I think there is some question, there was even some question this week about his general belief about whether Foxconn can hit the targets that they have laid out. And Foxconn's definitely... I mean, he doesn't know, right? Isn't that what he said? I just... We don't know yet. We don't know if they're going to hit them. Right. I, I mean, the, there's certain, the company is certainly making promises that, yes, we're going to follow through. But at the same time, then we're hearing, you know, plans are to plans change or they have ultimately changed. Um, so I think this is going to kind of be a step at a time. I think every organization that has some kind of connection to Foxconn, all of these local communities that are supposed to have Foxconn innovation centers, the University of Wisconsin who has a partnership in the Department of Engineering, they, I mean, all of these folks are sort of counting on that these things are, pieces are all going to come through eventually. I think um, Terry Go coming to Wisconsin, I think him going to the White House was an effort to to try to calm, assuage some of these fears. But uh, I don't know that the skepticism is entirely over. But he also, in his position, has, um, you know, sort of a thin line to walk. He had been quite skeptical about it during the campaign. So had many Democrats. But also now you want to see things succeed, too, because they could be a large economic engine for I the I thought state. what he said, I thought this was the first time I've heard this, Jessica, that he thought... Um, uh, Chairman Go was starting to withdraw from the whole process here in in part to prepare to run for the presidency of Taiwan. Right. I mean, I think that, that is... That sounds a, like a big deal. That is a big... I mean, that has been a big question. Can he run Foxconn and be the president of Taiwan at the same time? And then what does... If all of that comes to be, what does that mean for this project? I mean, he has certainly... He's not only the figurehead, but he's the founder of that company. And uh, a lot of what you hear people talk about when it comes to Foxconn is... Terry Go and the beginnings of the company and how it became successful and if he's not the person that's the driving force behind that and again remember he is the primary person that built relationships with Governor Scott Walker with Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation he was here and they were talking directly to him about what was going to happen in Wisconsin so if with it's Chancellor not, Becky Blank I mean with correct, local right. officials he, yeah so. and came here with the with UW Hospital yep. about cancer center research I mean they it was directly with him so if he's not the person behind it you know how extensive of marching orders has he given the people that come behind him how invested are they in what's going on in Wisconsin and the success of it I think that is a very significant question um, as to what the future of this looks like so you mentioned that there are some Republicans that are <clears throat> um, somewhat open to uh, v variations on Medicaid accepting Medicaid funding and Perhaps medical marijuana is a standalone bill. I mean, it raises the question, how severe will the Republican budget proposal be in, in walking that very um, conservative line that built on the Republican base? Well, I think in the same way that we're talking about, you know, Governor Evers built a budget that had a lot of things that may very well, you know, have been non-starters for Republicans. It wouldn't surprise me in the least if the budget that goes back to him includes a lot of things that would be non-starters for him. Um, granted, this also ultimately is going to be a compromise situation. They're going to have to pass a budget at some point. We're going to come down the line to where schools have to know how much money they get. And, you know, of course, we're saying this all in May, and the deadline is July 1, but if I was a betting person, I'd say it's probably not going to be done that by then. But um, that's just, you know, would be uh, where I, what I would guess would happen. But I think Republicans feel like they need, this is their way to make a statement. This is their way to make a stand about the policies that they've passed in the past where they think we need to go as a state and I would guess that that vision is going to be included in the document that ultimately comes back to his desk. One of the things after watching uh, your conversation that I was wondering about as well is how many things realistically 
of these policy items that they're taking out of the budget, can he get past outside of it? Right. right? I mean, there's, there's, and there were, uh, there's a lot of different pieces that we would be looking at there, and I think one of them that a lot of people are looking at is this marijuana legislation. Right. What can you do with that? M more limited than what we're seeing right Certainly. Now. Right, I right. mean, I think what you've seen an appetite, if at all, <laughs> a slight appetite for is, is medical marijuana legalization. Right. The Democratic proposal that they've put forward goes much further than that. It, it legalizes recreational, which Governor Evers has not um, necessarily said he is interested in doing either, but I, I think those are the things we it, that is going to be really interesting to watch. How many of these things can they still do? Well, in our last minute, I'll ask you the question I asked him last. How quickly does the 2020 election intrude on Wisconsin politics and start to suck all the air oh, out goodness. of them? I, I don't know how uh, much it will suck the air out completely, but it's certainly going to be in the conversation on a regular basis. How many candidates we've seen, um, three, four, five of them already coming through Wisconsin, and you're going to see that on a loop And won't all the, the governor time. be in the spotlight oh, for needing to deliver the state? And I think there's also been so much of a question already about will he endorse someone, which he seems to not be willing to do at this point. But how do you do that when you're hosting the DNC and right, there's 20-plus 20 20 yeah, right, 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 people right. running? Yeah. Jessica, thanks very much. You're welcome. We're going to wrap up for the record right after this. energy company for the future through the power of working together committed to cleaner more sustainable energy driven by innovation fostered by shared values energy 2030 together.com hello folks i'm rosalie michaels and i'm here with former dallas cowboys quarterback danny white and we're talking about home safety thanks so much for coming in danny thanks for inviting me i heard that you've been working to come up with an offer to help people protect their homes. Is that right? That's right. Our mission is to ensure that everyone receives the protection that they need. So we're offering a brand new home security system, $850 value, free of charge. And it's kind of hard to beat free. <laughs> so tell us about monitoring. Well, you get 24-7 monitoring for burglar, fire, and medical emergencies from ADT, the number one home security company in America. And monitoring is about a dollar a day. There's no better investment you can make for the things that matter most. The first 20 callers to order will receive a $100 Visa gift card plus two wireless keychain remotes free of charge. So call now and we'll help you protect your home. To get this special offer, call 855-549-1430. That's 855-549-1430. On the next Live at Four, we have an exciting announcement from the UW campus. If you're a fan of the Union Terrace, you'll want to tune in. And Will Loper will be along to tell us what he thinks of the new romantic comedy, Long Shot. It's been nearly 10 years since a pardon was granted in Wisconsin. How that affected one local man. I lost hope. And why Governor Evers says it's time for a change. People that deserve a second chance should get it. Monday on News 3 Now at 10. Building a community energy company for the future through the power of working together, committed to cleaner, more sustainable energy, driven by innovation, fostered by shared values. Energy2030together.com. My thanks to Governor Evers and to Jessica Arp and to you for joining us. We'll see you next week on For the Record.